What is up everyone? Welcome to another manga review and I am back to Gantz. Three volumes in an omnibus of absolute insanity and oh man, this series is getting so good. I mean it was good before. It was good before. Everything about it was great. I loved everything up until um, like the main section that I was aware of after Kato and all those characters died. You know, it was just uh, Kurono left by himself. All that stuff was amazing and I was just like, wow, like where can it go from here? And uh, it goes plenty of different new places and there's a few things that are happening in this volume, well, in this omnibus. This is uh, volumes 13, 14, and 15 together that I'm going to review all at once uh, because I just, I read the whole thing all at once and I've reviewed all the omnibus, omnibuses as kind of one big volume. Um, and they keep introducing new stuff to keep you questioning, like, Gantz is a series all about questions, and I've mentioned this in my previous reviews, so I'm not going to go full into detail about that again, but it's a series that thrives on not knowing what the fuck is going on. Like, that's the whole point, is that we are trying to figure out what is happening while at the same time fending for our lives, well, as the main characters are fending for their lives, and every time we learn a little bit, just a tiny little nugget of, of new information, there's all this other shit happening. Like in the last Omnibus, we had these characters that kind of awakened their ability to use telekinesis of some sort, just naturally. It had nothing to do with Gantz, completely unrelated to Gantz. And they were able to, you know, like stop someone's heart or speed up their heartbeat or give somebody like a brain aneurysm and whatnot, which was like super triggering. As well as in the last uh, Omnibus, the character Izumi, who apparently had been in Gantz before at some point and gotten out of it, because once you reach 100 points, I believe... Um, now, I I know what happens when you reach 100 points, but I don't remember how I obtained this knowledge because in this volume, they're still kind of questioning it. Uh, but I know that when you get, reach 100 points, maybe it was in the movie. I think it was in the, uh, the CG movie. Um, you can either leave the game and have your memories erased, or you can bring somebody back from the dead, bring another player back. Um, so he must have had his memories erased. He must have won Gantz at some point, and then now, you know, kind of had these strange dreams about returning and wants to return to Gantz. And he kind of, uh, he kind of sees K. Corono, our main character, as maybe as we, the readers, see him a little bit, or at least saw him at first. Because one thing I want to state is that um, K. Corono is not, he's not a horrible person. But he's not a good person either. He is just, I think, uh, the perfect embodiment of a teenage boy. Like a real, like, grounded, down-to-earth concept. Not an ultimate hero, shonen protagonist. Not like some villain that wants to destroy the world or anything. He is just an average, everyday teenager. And I love that aspect about him. And I think that Izumi sees him as this just regular guy, this regular teen, this kid that just wants to get laid and survive, you know, that's kind of how he started out as, and a lot of those aspects are still inside of him. Um, you know, he's just basically trying to survive from the day-to-day, the moment-to-moment. -day, -moment. Even in this volume, uh, there's a moment where civilian casualties were going to be a factor, and Corona was just thinking, no, we have to save ourselves, I don't give a shit. You know, just kind of like hating the world, hating society, that stuff that we feel, that inner rage that we feel as a teenager. Um, so all of that is still within him, and I think Izumi sees him as that person. It sees him as this kind of useless, everyday, run-of-the-mill, average teenager. So he's like, why are you here? You know, why are you the guy? And Izumi, of course, is the one that did the mass shooting in the last volume. He, he put on, literally, he put on blackface and went out and created a mass shooting, and Kurono is the only one that knows it was him. Because obviously he was he was kind of in disguise, if you will, um, which was really disturbing. Um, just the, like I mean, the blackface to begin with, and then like the mass shooting concept, uh, it was it was pretty disturbing. Um, and now everyone's brought into this game of Gantz, and they're fighting against dinosaurs. <laughs> and if like you've never read Gantz, you're just like, what the fuck are you talking about? But I I don't even know what I'm talking about because it's just Gantz. Anyways, let me stay on track. So the thing is, uh, Izumi is trying to prove himself that he is this uh, great fighter in Gantz. Like, he's the one that deserves to be here, not Kurono. So he's going off on his own. He's not with the team. He's facing the dinosaurs by himself. He has a sword that can grow into this giant, huge, gigantic sword. Uh, he's taking down the dinosaurs by himself, solo. But except with this panda that's next to him that got pulled into Gantz also. Animals can get pulled in as well. We saw a dog before. Now there's a panda. And the panda seems to like him. And uh, I think he likes the panda too, because he did save the panda at one point. Um, 
But Corono, now his story during uh, this game of Gantz, so let's go until the, uh, the end of the dinosaur battle. So this game of Gantz with the dinosaurs really puts Corono in the place of a leader because he's the one that has been through this umpteenth times at this point. He knows what's going on. He doesn't even have a suit at this point. He's not wearing the Gantz suit. Remember, he got pulled in uh, once he got shot by Izumi uh, at the very tail end of the mass shooting segment. Um, they got pulled in together, and so, um, you know, he didn't have a chance to go and get his suit on. So he's doing all this without the suit, and he's having these characters see, you know, how good he is at this because he's been through this several times now and it's not even that he's like ultimately like it's not even that he's some sort of amazing warrior he just has the uh knowledge of how to defeat the creatures and how to use the weapons like he, he just has the experience factor going for him which which is great and people are seeing him do these amazing things and they're looking up to him like this guy knows what's going on this guy's taking care of this shit this guy's shooting you know taking down the creatures so they're all looking to him as a leader, which is just crazy to think about it because if you think about the character of Corono, like I said, he's this everyday run-of-the-mill average teenager that really, before this all started, he just hated people and just wanted to get laid. Like a very simplistic, you know, just uh, angsty, angry teen. And now he's been put into this position where people are viewing him as a hero. Um, and how does someone respond to that? How does a character like that respond? And what I loved about it was he went back to thinking about his friend Kato. And I'm glad Kato is not forgotten uh, after his death, which I really want to see what happened to his younger brother. I, I wonder if that's ever going to come into play. Because now his younger brother is like living alone, right? And he's like 10. What's going to happen with him? But um, what's great is that Kurono doesn't really know how to lead. He's not a leader. He's not a natural leader. Um, but he channels his friends Kato and he, he wonders like what would Kato do? What would his first plan of action be? And uh, by doing that, by remembering the things Kato said, by remembering, you know, protect the weakest ones first and do this and do that, he kind of channels what Kato would have done and is managing to lead this whole group of people in this giant battle against these dinosaurs. Um, and that was amazing to see, as well as some other great characters being uh, utilized here. The old man character, I can't remember his name, but, um, you know, this is the kind of guy that would have died right away in one of the previous Gantz games. But because of Corono's now leadership, and because of, you know, him having faith in Corono, this old guy actually winds up being pretty useful. He winds up driving this kind of circular bike thing that they have, and he winds up, you know, being able to pick the dinosaur up by the tail, utilizing the suit, and being able to use its strength to kind of throw it around, um, and basically enhancing all of these attributes about himself because of Corono. So, inadvertently, Corono, this kid that, you know, was probably never destined for this position that was kind of thrown into it, is now inspiring and enhancing the abilities of other people because of his mere existence. And I just think that is kind of like a beautiful concept that they were able to do with this character. Um, and to kind of give this character more meaning in his own life as well. And one of the most miraculous things that happen, or at least I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that once this uh, battle with the dinosaurs ends, Everyone gets transported back to the room of Gantz. Uh, well, actually, actually, I'm wrong. I was going to say, nobody dies. It actually, they actually defeat all of the monsters, all of the aliens, without any casualties, which is the first time that's ever happened since the beginning of this manga. However, something very strange happens in the middle of this manga, where these new characters are introduced that know about the characters in Gantz. Now, when I first saw them, I thought that they were a Gantz team from another area. Because I think that is going to come into play at some point in the manga that we're going to find out there are more Gantzes around the world, not just this one. And so I thought they were from another, like, Gantz district or whatever you want to call it, uh, that were going to come in and kind of challenge them or something like that. But, turns out, I guess they are Gantz's incarnation of vampires. So, Gantz introduces this concept of, like, telekinesis in the last volume. And now, here in this omnibus, they introduce this concept of there are these vampires now that obviously subsists on blood, but can be in the daylight, so it's a, it's a different twist on vampires again. Um, and, uh, yeah, they just start killing, like, the characters. As they're being transported back to the room Gantz, they kill some of the uh, ancillary characters that we didn't really get to, to see much of, and they're about to kill the old man character who gets cut, but winds up, you know, coming back to the room before, luckily, he dies. Uh, so, 
what is going on with them, where do they come from, what are these creatures, I don't know, they look human, they're called vampires, I think, I guess, and uh, they're aware of the Gantz team and they have uh, like contact lenses that they can see because, you know, when Gantz is in play, everyone is invisible, but they have these contacts where they can see them, um, and I don't know what the, the special detail about the Gantz characters are to these vampires, but apparently they're after them specifically. I don't know why. Maybe Gantz put them up to it. Maybe there's something else going on. It just, this series just con continues to uh, give you these mysteries and you're just like, what is going on? And then they add even more into that because, um, and I don't remember if we knew about this before, but apparently K. Corona, our main character, has a brother. And now that brother is, has turned, has become a vampire or, or a part of this team of vampires. Uh, and I just don't know. I don't know where it's going with this. I really don't. I don't know. This kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and I don't know what kind of impact these characters are going to play in the story. And uh, I'm excited to find out. But it's just sort of this like little middle portion of this omnibus. And uh, we don't really get enough information to really go on. Other than the fact that, okay, they are monsters. They subsist on blood. If they don't drink blood, they, they start to get sick. They feel sickness. Um, Corona's brother is one of them. Corona and his brother don't talk to each other. They're distant from each other. And uh, they want Izumi for some reason. Now, maybe this has to do with the fact that Izumi uh, defeated or, or won Gantz at one point and came back and had his memory erased and now he's back in Gantz. Maybe that's not supposed to happen. And so maybe the vampires are, you know, a team sent by Gantz to do something special with Izumi since he's not supposed to be there. I don't really know. That's just a, a quick theory I had. I'll have to think more into it, but we'll see what's going to happen with that. Anyways, um, so the other thing that happens in this omnibus uh, that's very important, I feel, is uh, K. Corono's relationship with his girlfriend, Ty. Now, we know that he originally dated Ty because it was a dare, it was a joke, right? And he just kind of asked her out, and she said yes, and then he just kind of went with it. And then he wound up, you know, having fun with her, and she wound up finding out that, hey, she'll have sex with me anytime, this is pretty awesome. Um, and it, it, was, it was a very detached relationship, but very slowly kind of turned into Kay really liking this girl. In fact, you know, he's protected her many times, and he wants to be around her, and he thinks about her when he's in the Gantz missions, you know, it kind of gives him a reason, a purpose to survive. It's just like, I want to get back to her. So again, that's kind of changing his character more, you know, from the kid that just wanted to get laid to a kid that actually has sort of a romantic relationship with somebody that actually is meaningful to him. And, uh, you know, this gets askewed because in the Gantz game now, there is this uh, woman named Rika, I believe is her name, and she is like an actress, model, she's famous. She's the first, like, famous person to show up in Gantz, because Gantz is a random assortment of characters, and this is the first time we've seen, like, a, a famous person here. Um, and, of course, she's absolutely gorgeous. She makes money off of her looks. You know, she's, uh, if Gantz was written right now, she'd probably be an Instagram model or an OnlyFans person, you know. Uh, so this is how she makes her living. And she takes a liking to Kay Corono because, obviously, uh, Corono is the one, you know, doing all this amazing things, and everyone's looking up to him, and she sees him, you know, she sees his status. She's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very standard kind of uh, woman liking the man by seeing, you know, what he can accomplish and what he can do. He has this kind of uh, clout to him, and, so she, of course, she's attracted to him because of this. Um, and she wants to see him. She wants to hang out with him. She wants to see him outside of Gantz, and uh, this causes, of course... Um, you know, some confliction in Corono because he is this guy, he is a teenager, right? And th now this famous woman wants his attention. Uh, and she's absolutely gorgeous. She's beautiful. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the girl he is dating, Ty, uh, she's cute, but she's, you know, an average girl. And she was kind of a dork, kind of a nerd. She's into manga and stuff. So there's that. Um, she's, you know, trying to draw her own manga, which is also cute. But, um, you know, he, he went out with her originally from a dare, and now this, like, beautiful, gorgeous model woman is, is after his attention. And so what's he going to do with this? And he uh, he goes out to see her one time. They just, it's it's kind of a date, not really, you know, nothing happens. He doesn't, he doesn't like, have sex with her or anything. He doesn't really fully cheat on, on Ty. But 
uh, because she's famous, paparazzi were out and they got a photo of it. And so Ty sees this and she gets upset and she uh, she learns that Kay was hanging out with this woman, Rika. And Kay is thinking like, maybe I should break up with Ty because I'm only going to put her in danger. And if Rika is part of the Gantz team, you know, we're kind of in this together. We have this shared thing and Ty is kind of outside of that. And he has this confliction in his head and we know it kind of boils down to him, you know, being a little bit hard for Rika. And speaking of being hard, Ty gives him a blowjob without him being asking uh, sooner. No, she just does it because she wants to. So I think he should really look into Ty being a, a, a quality woman because, I mean, that's just, like, that's what you want, you know? Um, you you want to not have to ask. You want her to just do it. Um, you know, that's what makes it hot, is knowing that she wants to do it, not that you have to ask her to do it. What, what makes it hot is her... T Anyways, um, besides that, is, is that... Um, <laughs> Anyway, so Corona was finding this purpose in the uh, in the Gantz team, and and uh, I like the uh, the parallel because we see him back at school after the mission, and you know people still pick on him, the teachers pick on him. He's not good at the sports, you know, teams or anything like that in gym class. And then afterwards, you know, his Gantz team meets up with him for uh, I guess training or just to kind of get together, just to kind of regroup. Everybody except Azumi, of course. And uh, it's cool to see how he has this purpose now or like he's looked how he's looked up to as a hero and an idol with the Gantz team and how in everyday modern life he's looked at as a loser and and somebody that's worthless and uh you know it kind of even though getting out of the Gantz game is kind of the goal um in a way it would take away what is making him special right now so I thought that was interesting too. And so where this omnibus leaves off is we have Corona uh the Gantz team in another mission but all of a sudden, Gantz says that the target of their mission, instead of just being another alien, the target is Ty, Corona's girlfriend. And you're just like, what the fuck? Now, there's a moment in the Gantz anime, which is not canon, where K, uh, Corona himself becomes the target and everyone kind of turns on him and comes after him. And I'm thinking that was taken inspiration from this part of the manga. I don't know what came out first. Uh, but instead of Corona being the target, it's Corona's girlfriend. And so... You know, every it, it causes a split in the group. So, Corona goes to protect uh, Ty. He goes to kind of get her and, and get her out of danger, right? And then we have uh, Izumi, who of course is taking this opportunity to turn on Corona because he, again, he views Corona as somebody that shouldn't be in this game, that shouldn't have the recognition that he has, that shouldn't be getting as many points as he's getting for winning these games. Like Izumi feels like he should be the guy. Um, and Corona is a piece of shit. He's kind of sees through Corona's, uh, the, the, I don't want to say facade, because it's not a facade, but he sees through who Corona is kind of deep down, which is just uh, a guy, like I said, he's not an evil person, but he's not a good person either. Um, Azumi, uh, of course, who did a mass shooting, is an evil person. Uh, so there's that as well. So he kind of splits, and he has three uh, three new characters introduced, uh, gang rapists that are there, and they'll probably die off fairly quickly. But who knows? It's Gantz. You never know who's going to live and who's going to die. Uh, as well as a longer-haired character, I can't remember his name, joins his side. And they start to fight against the old man, against Rika, against the two kids that have the telekinesis. And, uh, oh yeah, the big, like, really strong guy, too. who He didn't do a lot in this volume, unfortunately, but um, I really like him as well. So now there's kind of a battle happening between the Gantz team itself. So we have that going into it. We have Ty, this is the, the cliffhanger. So Ty is the target now. We have a battle going on between the Gantz team itself. And we also have this kind of third party knowledge that there are these vampire creatures that are going to, that are coming after the Gantz team for some reason that we don't know. Uh, like I said, my theory is that maybe um, they're coming after Izumi because he's not supposed to be back in the game. Maybe they're just uh, coming to kind of even the, the score. Like I said, like everyone was, would have survived that Gantz game if not for the vampire showing up last minute. Uh, so maybe they're there just to make sure that not everybody survives. And then, of course, we have Izumi being the dick that he is. Um, and I really want to see Izumi get what's coming to him. But he is probably the most skilled out of all of them. Um, now, we still have... Uh, like I said, we still have the big muscular character. I can't remember his name, uh, but he he is gonna if he when he puts on a suit, you know, he and he's already like the strongest dude around. So if he puts on a suit, he's gonna be insanely powerful. We have the kids with telekinesis, which it seems as though it wasn't working 
they were kind of using it on Izumi, or maybe they didn't get a chance to, because I think they have to focus in order to do it, so if they're dodging, you know, a sword swipe, they probably can't use their telekinesis during that, so I'd like to see what's going to happen with that. I would like to see them teach telekinesis to Corona or to some of the other characters, because can you imagine, um, you know, just that enhanced power, just you already have your experience, you have the Gantt suits, and then you would have telekinesis. I think that would be an absolute destructive combo, so that would be great. Um, we still haven't seen anyone reach 100 points. We still don't really know where Gantz came from or what its purpose is. Um, we still have uh, so all, all the um, other things that are unanswered. So we have uh, the the girl K the, that died during the uh, the big event, the big Buddha statue event. So there's another version of her that still exists that's out there as well. We didn't see her at all in this omnibus, but that's still a factor. Um, like I said, I want to see what happened to Kato's younger brother. I don't know if we'll ever get that. Um, and now we have this, we have uh, Kurono's brother too, who is a vampire, who will probably get brought onto this team that is sent to go out uh, against the Gantz team, and we'll have a confrontation with Kurono. Maybe he'll team up with Izumi. Um, we'll see about that. I don't know. And then, uh, of course, we have Tai as the, uh, the target. And I really, I feel like it's going to head to Ty's death. I feel like it's going to, it's going to go that way. And I feel like that will really be a big change in the, uh, the character of Corono. That will really shift him from either being um, a hardened, you know, cold warrior, or or will break him down into just being, um, you know, the the scared teenage boy that he is deep down. I don't know. Um, but I, I cannot wait to see what's happening. I can't believe how intriguing Gantz is continuing to be because, you know, after the big Buddha statue battle, like, you really... Because you lose so many characters. You lose Kato, you lose Kei, you lose all these other characters. Um, Mishimoto, I think it was her name. Um, we lose all these great characters that we came to love, so you wonder, you know, what's going to happen? How can Gantz continue from there? But... This new team is is great. The old man character is great. Um, I like I said, I love the, the kids with the telekinesis. Like it's so unique and cool. And now you're adding in this uh, this other factor of these vampire monsters and stuff. It's just like Gantz is just batshit balls to the wall, and I love it for that aspect. So thank you for being with me for this very long review. Like I said, I'm reviewing three volumes technically, so it's going to be longer. But I know you Gantz fans will appreciate it. Um, if you're not a fan of Gantz, I just spoiled a whole lot for you. But I hope you maybe check it out. It is very adult, by the way, but hey, you're here because probably Berserk content, so you're no stranger to that. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. Please tell me what you think about Gantz Omnibus Volume 5. This is Volumes 13, 14, and 15 all together. Let me know what you think about uh, my thoughts going forward. Hopefully, I'm on the right track, and I cannot wait until the next one comes out. Uh, shit, I mean, I might read this shit online because I'm, I'm like super invested right now, but tell me what you think. Comment below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. Um, and I'll talk to you guys in the next manga review.